The following presentation does not represent Australian opinion or intellect. Fake news, folks. Fake news. Are you Muslim? He should have been slapped as a child. He's a spoiled brat. He's probably being treated like a prince. I'm not a crook. I've earned everything I've got. You also had people. Yeah. Because that's got to be that's got to be up there. See, like here, as long as it's below, as long as it's. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> and if I go further back, I'll just increase the volume a little bit. But uh, you're right. I mean, this does sound a lot, a lot dreamier, really, doesn't it? <laughs> you're fucking weird, man. Oh fucking hey. <laughs> right. Have we met? Yeah. You just you just you just coming up with that theory now? Oh. <laughs> There's a coast in front of you. Respect the rules. What's the deal with coasters? <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> there's such a waste of life. No, nah, because then you don't want the little rings on the table. See, the rings on the table. I love the rings on the table. I'm like, that was one time. That was Barry. He's not around anymore. Um, see that little cut there that some someone put a hot plate on there? Like, hot plates, fair enough. You can put something down. But my table at home has been destroyed. What kind of table is it? Well, it was a... It's what? It's, it's a wooden, brown wooden table. And it's got... Like these, hardwood? Like hardwood. Uh, no, you know what? It's, it's a Harvey Norman job. And it looks brown. And, and well, it's brown. It, it is brown, yeah. <laughs> it, it, looks, it looks... Yeah, it looks brown like a... Hang on. So, is it like a tiki sort of... A little bit, yeah. It was once upon a time, it was quite shiny, but if you keep putting cups and dings and stuff, then it just starts to, you know, have a bit yeah, of Yeah, but it's got that weathered look, right? It's, well, no, it doesn't. It's a very shiny, shiny table, but it's got the weathered look now. It's getting there. It but it's a, brown. It, it is brown. Yeah. How old is it? It's, uh, I bought it in 2008. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because I, I'm picturing my coffee table and it's just a white IKEA job, yeah, like just square, white, clean, and you get a ring on it and it looks like shit. Yeah, well, it looks brand new, I can tell. It's shiny, shiny. <laughs> But if you get one ring on it, it looks shit. If you get 20,000 rings on it, now you got art. It's got character. <laughs> you know? You I'm about? just worried that you've actually got... Um, you're one of those people that buys a nice leather couch and you've still got oh, a little the plastic, plastic <laughs> over it. No, but, not, then, but then we put a rug over not, the plastic. I'm not Italian. Italian. I'm not Italian. I'm Greek. Right, is that an Italian thing? I, I've seen Aussies do no, that. Greeks, and I was just like, do it as well. It's sad. Yeah. I, I always believe like you need... I, dude, I had a cousin. I had a cousin. I have a cousin. And he's, if he hears this, he'll, he'll fucking give me shit for it. I think probably mentioned two years ago. He would have his phone, like, you know, and you'd have that plastic fucking sleeve that goes over it. You know when you first buy a phone? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. He'd have that sleeve on there till it was absolutely ridden with fucking fingerprints. It was, like, chipped up. It was, um, you know, like, just hanging off a bubbly and full of dust. I'm like, dude, peel the fucking seal off. Enjoy the phone. No, no, no. It's going to protect it forever. Okay, dude, you're going to have the... F eventually, you're going to get rid of the phone in, like, six months anyway, because it's going to be old, and you're going to feel like an idiot because you had this... You do you know what I mean? People love to protect the phone. I'm, I, I've seen that as well. I'm like, what are you doing? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, but you're not actually using it. Like, it's not actually... You're one layer away from the actual product. <laughs> do you wear shit? Do you have shit in your cupboard that you refuse to wear because you don't want to ruin it? No. No? Man, I'm a simple kid from the country. I'm not, I'm not from the country at all. <laughs> Just simple. You were on Chapel Street when I saw you. Look, I, I, I told you, smart, dumb guy. You're not from the country Rich, poor guy. All. Not from the country. I just clicked on what you said. <laughs> I'm just an old, I'm just an old town fashion boy. Yeah, what are just, you just about? simple country kid, you know, fresh eggs, good values. You live in the country? Never. <laughs> you know, that's, that's probably my biggest pet peeve with like the reality shows when they introduce a guy and he's like, yeah, I'm just a, just an, a country boy from fucking Wodonga or some shit. You know what I mean? Every time. And because they say he's from the country, it automatically has this perceived sort of thing like 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 yeah it's the vehicle it's his new vehicle that is is that country guy like d dude most country hillbillies i know are like racist rednecks yeah like do you know do you know what i mean <laughs> dude i've got family in mildura like i've grew up going to the country okay mildura she, my, my sister's based in mildura really <laughs> who lives there yeah. <laughs> no it's lovely it's great I, <laughs> did i mention i live in south yeah um <laughs> most livable suburb in the world by the way <laughs> No, 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 I'm just saying. <laughs> Jeez, I'm just dropping stuff. You've never been from the country. 
Look, I can. I'm an actor, so therefore, <laughs> therefore, I've had a time where I was a doctor, I was a school teacher, I was a, an assassin, and I'm pretty sure I was a country kid. Assassin? You played an assassin. I played an assassin. It was a, a film called Message Man. It's out on Amazon Prime, actually. Oh, okay. So we're pr- promoting this shit. So check it out, guys. Amazon Prime. Uh, you can't see it in Australia. Don't worry. <laughs> All the films I do, you can't see in Australia. I like it that way. Um, that way, no one knows me, and uh, <laughs> I don't get any kudos for my acting. <laughs> Everyone just thinks I'm a washout. Yeah, yeah. But well, that, not you're always working though. I am always working. Um, yeah, but that's just you know, it's just um, camera tricks and <laughs> special effects. Now, I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> look, I, I, I'm always working, but but let me give you some some some. Like, let's balance this out. People are like, you did a season of a show, hypothetically. Okay. Um, the season for a show usually goes, I think it's like 13 weeks. Something like that. You know, 13 yeah, weeks. Yeah, it's, it's literally a half a... Like a yeah. yeah, and you tend to shoot an episode a week. Okay. That's 13 weeks work, mate. <laughs> it's like, oh, geez, what have you done lately? Oh, in the last two years, I did a season of... Yeah, you did 13 weeks work in two, <laughs> two years, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's not incredible. It's not... <laughs> What's your relationship like? I've got to ask. What's your relationship like with other heads in media in Australia? I mean, you're saying you do movies overseas, right? Yeah. And I know heaps of actors that actually do that, but and I understand why. But what is your relationship with Australian media personalities? Because I hate them. I fucking hate them. Uh huh. <laughs> Look, uh, so you're saying what do I think of Australian celebrities? No, there's a difference because you can become okay. a celebrity for doing absolutely nothing here. Yeah. You know, and we make celebrities out of footy players, we make celebrities out of, you know, anyone. Any, anyone. <laughs> oh, mate, uh, I think reality TV stars rule the, yeah. the roost as far as, you know, um, but, a lot of that like, stuff. If you look at your typical Logies crowd or whatever, you know, I mean, dude, your name was on the front page of, like, fucking TV Week for how long? You yeah, know? I think, well, I did 13 covers. I think when I first <laughs> met you, I was like, yeah, 13 covers. <laughs> People know you more from 13 covers, I think, than. Well, dude, that night when we were at Temperance, Someone turned to me and said, "Hey, isn't that Paul O'Brien?" I'm like, yeah, <laughs> dude. Like, I didn't. But it's bizarre that people. I had no still idea. Know who I am? Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> dude, do you remember? We've worked together. Mm-hmm. We've worked together twice, man. Once I was on set with you, and we did the TVC. Ah, um, oh, fuck. What was it called? It was like a. It was a dry comedy. It was a, like an IT in IT, I think. Oh, Orchard, Orchard yes, yes, them. yes. Yeah, and you were like the manager. That dude. was fun. Yeah, that was yeah, actually good yeah. shit. That was fucking hilarious. Yeah, it was. It was very. Yeah, it was fun. It's a shame it didn't didn't yeah. go further. I think that had actual potential. The cast was yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Dude, that cast. Madeline West was on that cast as well. Yeah, you had Orchik running it, and you had Madeline West. And yeah. dude, I still th- remember it because that was the first time I'd ever been on a shoot, and there were faces that I actually recognised. Okay, your name, Ma- uh, Madeline West. Where I was like, hey, like I've seen these people. This is legit. Yeah, like we're not actually just bums anymore. Like we're actually getting proper work. But then you know you realise a pilot, <laughs> people do a pilot every fucking two days. You know, and how many of them get picked up? You know? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've made a few pilots in my in my time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so there was that. And then there was the short film Faces, which you were in. Ah, oh, and Madeline again. Yeah, actually, she, Madeline yeah, again. I think she played my mum. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that bizarre? <laughs> Isn't that bizarre? Yeah. I mean, they did make her look a lot older and hideous, which is hard to do with, I, with her. I pre-produced that. I did all the production. I was oh, a producer okay. on that, and I did all the post effects audio because I was overseas during uh, that. I went to, I was in the states and I was in Europe for two months. What don't you do? Me? Yeah. Uh, eat soy. <laughs> really? I, can't stand I had it. some soy for breakfast, but what? It's another story. Why? Why not? Because it tastes like shit. Oh, I sh- I did. Um, it was actually my second meal for the day. <laughs> when I think about it, but um, what was your first meal? Well, uh, first meal, uh, straight up veggies. Um, and then organic beef mints, and then a shitload of uh, mushrooms, but different uh, styles of mushroom. What time was this? Wait, uh, hang on. What time was your second meal? So first meal, I think today was at... Um, oh, I sort of jammed it in because, yeah, this girl had to come and go. And, um, so it was about 11.30. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I've got too many questions. It was, that it, sentence yeah, it was, it was about 11.30. So first meal, no carbs, um, just straight up veggies and protein so you don't spike insulin. Um, and then the second meal I had prawn goza and I steam it and then I fry it and then I put sweet chili sauce in the pan and I toffee fry the outside so it's like hard and so it's crunchy and it's incredible. 
Okay, your cooking just makes my cooking sound like absolute shit, like straight off the bat. Oh, sorry about that. No, no, it's fine. Look, I used to cook a lot in, I don't, in, I look, to make you feel better. No, no, no. I don't claim to be a good cook. I just know how to survive on, like, raw ingredients. Like, whenever I have anything, I know how to make a meal out of it. That's what happens when you're poor. <laughs> yes. I can relate to this. Actors are always poor. I mean, you see, I, I cooked growing up. Like, I've cooked for many, many years. In your country town of... Uh, yes. That's right. <laughs> Gold Coast. Actually, that was the Gold Coast. Just a coastal town. Simple kid. Fresh fresh waves. Jumping off rocks. Playing guitar. Hacky sack. Um, yeah. I'm just living. Living. Sand between the toes. Sleeping Gold. on my boardies. Gold Coast. You can really feel it, can't you? What it costs to live in the Gold Coast? I feel like it's a lot cheaper than than, really? than Melbourne. Yeah, I mean, back in the day, you could get a whole four bedroom house on a canal with a double garage close to the beach for two hundred and fifty bucks. What? When I was growing up as a kid, that's what we we're renting a house for. Okay, my place now. Jeez, please, they, I'm paying a lot more than that for <laughs> one room. My that's, pl- that's property, and property in Melbourne's up the ass. Like, it doesn't matter where you go. Like, it's ridiculous. <laughs> like after mum sold the house like a couple of years ago, man, I started looking at the rental prices for the same property. I'm like, who the fuck would pay that much to live in that house? Like, really? Like, yeah. No, no, no. Anyway, okay. So, you're cooking. How? Cooking. Um, <laughs> cooking's been my life, to be honest. I wanted to be a chef. Really? And the chef was like, don't, like, go and do something with your life. And I was like, but I want to be, I want to be a chef. I was already cooking, um, sort of for him when he went away and blah, blah, blah. And, um, yeah, no one would let me be what I wanted to be. <laughs> really? Yeah, so I did that. And then he was like, man, oh, I, I can't let you do it. Like, you you, you should be doing something else. Um, and then I went and did a radio course with CFM on the Gold Coast. And I was doing copywriting. Like, you're very t- Like, I was coming up with these really <laughs> creative um, ad campaigns. How old were you doing this, man? I was like 22, 21. Okay. And I really, I'd done a building degree and then was like, what? I wanted to be a chef. And then, um, and then, you know, I did this radio course and the teacher's like, go be an actor. Building degree, radio course, and you wanted to be a chef. I was, yeah, well, I was cooking, I was cooking for, for money. Like, okay. From, from quite a young age. Um, you know, I started, yeah, working at Leonard's and poultry and butcher shops. I thought maybe you just roasted corn cobs on the side of the road in your country. Yeah, yeah. nothing <laughs> like that. I worked in a kiosk on Burley Beach. And I, and there was a seafood restaurant attached, and then I started doing some waiter work, and so. But I, I started as a short order cook, cooking hamburgers and fish and chips, and and curry no eggs sandwich. Yeah, did that for about five years while I was going to school. Okay, I have no idea. This is actually like I know a bit about you, man, but that's like what? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's really weird that you say radio course, man, because I looked at the same radio course about two months ago. Okay. And um, they wanted, like, you know, two, three grand or whatever the fuck it was and a year's worth of studying full time. And I'm like, I can't do this. And then I thought, well, wait, when I was 21, I did my audio engineering course. You know what I mean? And uh-huh. it's, it's the same sort of yeah. same investment, like, you know, as your radio thing. So we're around the same well, age. Well, when we made I, the want, same I wanted to talk. I wanted to, to to discuss stuff, and then you know this concept of radio. I was like, that's all I want to do. Yeah. And they were like, you don't have the face for radio. And I was like, what the who hell the, is that? Like, that? No, I, actually, I, had t- <laughs> I had a teacher, and he, and he came. He gave me this cutout from the paper, and it said actors wanted. And he goes, go try this out. And I was like, whatever. Okay. I didn't do acting at school. I was like, whatever acting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to be a stand up comedian. I wanted to be a chef. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I wanted to change the world. I just didn't know how. Okay. But yeah, good <laughs> fun. Good, good fun. But radio. I mean, it's it's a great it's a great thing, right? And then I listen yeah. to radio. Well, I don't listen to radio because I, well, I don't, have, don't have a car. It's shit. But I You're just noticed anything, that when I got interviewed on radio, I was like, you just talk an absolute trash, and yeah. I don't think it's good for kids. Radio? Well, just the uh, ads on TV and ads on radio are the reason why I don't watch TV or listen to radio. I can agree with that. I don't listen to radio because, A, it's music I don't want to listen to because it's all just commercial pumped out shit, and two, it's mostly ads. Yeah. The shit I'd never buy or even have any interest in. This is a brand new iPhone. I'm a bit concerned. It's been doing some weird That's a brand new shit. one. It's a brand new one, and it's playing up. And I'm like, what, what, why? 
because it's iPhone, man. It's garbage. Oh, you don't like the iPhone? Nah, man. I got, you got a phone. You, you got well, my business phone next to you on your left, and I got my phone, the burner right here on my right, on my, my left, and they're both Android, Samsung. Right. Don't do Look, iPhone. I would have been into Android, but um, it was too late. I'd already popped the cherry, and <laughs> um, I'm I'm also a simple guy, though. I don't want to have to like. I'm just like, oh, I want symbols and and big things that pop up on my on my desktop. They just go. Which one is the photo icon? Oh, there it is. <laughs> um, that's me. That's me. <laughs> okay. So, hang on. So, you you wanted to get into radio, and then a dude said, go do this acting thing. Go do this acting course. What was the first? Oh, so it was a course, straight up. Yeah, it was, oh, it was like an eight-week. T- but they were advertising in the newspaper, and I turned... It was just an acting class. Yeah. And I walked in this acting class, and there were these girls, and then I was like... Oh my god! They are the most beautiful yeah. girls I've ever seen in my life. And then I lay on the ground, and the teacher goes, "Her name was Judy Hamilton, okay. and she was this incredible. I, I believe she's still alive. I was trying to trying to find her the other night. Um, and she was, she's like, lay down on the floor, close your eyes. Um, the color red. If you could taste it, what would it taste like? <laughs> if you could touch it, what would it feel like? And I'm like, what? I'm like looking around like, everyone's going along with this? And we're doing like energy transfer. Like I put my hands, um, you know, my palms up. <laughs> you'd put your palms over my palms. We wouldn't touch. Yeah. Just the energy between you'd look into each other's eyes and you'd think triangle, square, circle. <laughs> and the other person would guess. And I was like... Damn, these are some weird ass trippers. I was smoking a lot of weed at the time. Okay, I think that brings a lot of perspective. It brings brings a lot of perspective. So I just went, this is a job. And by the way, I didn't want to smoke weed. I was just trying to fit in on the Gold Coast. (laughs) Because if you you will have no friends, if you want to be a surfer and not smoke weed. Were you a surfer? Yeah, I was. Like that whole, like... I, I was actually a bodyboarder, oh which is... Um, but I, I did I do surf as well. Um, I do stand-up. I was known as the Roll King. I had little kids come to the, the, into the little grommies, and they come and go, we call you the Roll King. I'm like, yeah. They, they owned Burly Heads. I was like, they owned that place. I had no idea. This is actually yeah. all news to me. Uh, thir- 13 years of my life was at Burley Heads. I was, in South Afri- I was born in South Africa. Yeah, I knew that. So I still had yeah. this accent. I was still a bit weird, but the ocean was a place where I wasn't weird. Yeah. And I could... <laughs> It's going to sound funny. And I could chant, do these African chants out in the back of the air. And I would just make these noises and, um, and you well, know. Bought it. Well, I was just getting a lot of emotion out. I had so much emotion built up um, inside of me my whole life. That's why I became an actor. Actors tend to be... Um, uh, yeah, they're, they're a bit odd. They, they need help. They're fried. Yeah, <laughs> oh, they're totally, they're nuts. Yeah, anyone that would do, anyone that would do, like, say, anything creative, like, say, in this scheme, acting, like, you know, music, all that sort of shit, when you explain the sacrifice to people, they don't, they can't comprehend it. Yeah. If you, like, you know, the starving actor thing is true. Oh, yeah. It's true. And mm. if you don't make it, you're fucked. Yeah, it's it, funny. Even when I make a lot of money now, I sort of give it away. People just stop being so generous with your money. I'm like, I'm just, I'm just so used to not having money that it yeah. just seems right. Everything's hanging in the balance until you get that break. You know, where, if you get it or not, like who knows? But you can't explain it. Like the, the hours, you know. Like I mean, yeah. Every- See, I've always called acting a, b- a bit of a wank, but um, I-, I had an audition on the weekend. I was like, you know what? It is a lot of work. Yeah. By the time you learn it, I mean, it was about five minutes, you know, footage by the time I send it through. Yeah. Three scenes. And, you know, by the time you learn it, you film it, and then you email it, you've taken a chunk out of your life. Yeah. And there's no applause. There's no money. No. And the, the agent doesn't even say it's... I mean, my agents do, fortunately. Yeah. Um, but if I don't do a good audition, I'm devastated because they'll just go, got it. <laughs> you know, and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, you don't get an audition for months and you can't sleep at night. Dude, I'm um, making music for years for no one. You know what I mean? Okay, exactly. I'm in the car jamming out to my tune thinking this is the best shit I've ever made. You know? Yeah, but that's the world, isn't it? It's all a dress rehearsal. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah, actually, that's a good way to put it. Mm. Holy shit. I, I always felt like acting, though, like people that want to be actors, the reason why there's something wrong with them, um, <laughs> well, there's a few reasons. Yeah. One is that they want to be someone else. And two, um, I think that actors are very smart and very lazy. 
think about it. What is one job on earth that you can think of that your job is to basically not do anything? Like, talking is probably the easiest thing to do as far as labour. Like, oh, man, I've been waiting tables or I've been laying, <laughs> you know, building brick walls. And actors like, oh, I just just speak. Yeah, but don't, don't, another actor wouldn't say that to you. As in, they'd, they'd tell another actor, but they wouldn't say it to the general public. It's a lot yeah, of work. Yeah, yeah, probably not. I mean, I forgot about the audition <laughs> things, a lot of work. But then when you actually, you're in orbit is what I call it. You're in space as an actor, and um, and everything just comes to you. But when you're on set, that's where it's like, oh, this is weird. I get a little bit sad and lonely when I'm on a film set. Really? Yeah. Why? That's why I started, you know, making video vlogs and, like, educating <laughs> actors on acting. But just out of boredom. I think I've self-diagnosed myself as having ADHD, maybe. Um, okay. But, but, I mean, I don't, apparently. Um, I've apparently. never been to a doctor, so... Um, <laughs> never. But, but, you know, being on set, suddenly you're... So you're hanging out with your friends, family, all yeah, this yeah, stuff, yeah. and then you book a roll. Yeah. Then you're in paradise for five weeks, or, or you know, yeah, some, somewhere that's some, terrible and hot and... Some cheap location out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you're by yourself. Yeah. And... We can't get to the Sahara, so... He's, uh, yeah, where be? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and it's like the budget, you know, we're just yeah, trying to... Yeah, yeah. Um, look, I've been spoiled on film sets. I've been lucky. Um, but at the same time, then you sit there, and when you think about it, okay, this is what you're going to wear. You have no say in what you wear. Okay, uh, this is where you're going to stand. Okay, you have no, no say where you're going to stand. <laughs> this is what you're going to say. Yeah. Um, you know, from clothes to haircut to, <laughs> to everything. And then they edit it. They pay for it. They came up with the story. You get a lot of the credit, though. Oh, I saw your film. Yeah. And I, that's where I'm just like, no wonder actors feel fraudulent. It's like, all they do is I was just staring at a dot and talking. And then people are like, oh, you're incredible. <laughs> your, your film was incredible. <laughs> and Masterpiece. Like, and it took someone four years to get it off the ground, <laughs> ten years to get it off the ground. Yeah. And, you know, and then they, they have to edit it and all this 150 people plus working on it full time. I think one of the things that got me the angriest was having to explain to someone what a, a producer does in a film. Like for a visual pro- project, yeah. So, what, what, what does a producer do? Oh. Like, what do they do? Oh. What do you mean? <laughs> They're the ones who lose hair yeah. and sleep, and yeah, yeah. You know it's I mean? a pretty stressful industry, though. The industry, period, the media in any medium is is a joke because the chance of success is, you know, I mean, you throw a dart out the window, yeah, maybe it'll hit, maybe it won't, yeah, who knows, and then. All the emotional baggage that you bring with it, you know, especially as an artist, because there are actors that aren't artists. You got to remember that. Mm. You know, I think that's a fine line between actors who appreciate the art and have their motivation for it, and then actors who come from reality TV, you know, who chase fame. Yeah, which is what you were talking about before about being a celebrity or being an actor. Mm. You know, which one are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, here's the thing. Every actor, when they start out, they just want to be famous. You reckon? Oh, 100%. You know why? Because I go, okay, cool, let's learn a saying. Oh, it's just so hard and I've been so busy and they've got this and that. And it's like, guess what? Guess what is the only thing you do as an actor? Yeah. You learn one scene at a time. <laughs> and then you stand in front of a camera and you speak. That's your job. Actors can't film scenes. They don't mind studying for three years at an institution. Yeah. And I go, cool. And then they they leave and they come and see me and go, I need footage. I'm like, no shit. I'm like, now I teach you how to act again. <laughs> like, um, so we talk, you know, there's a lot of fluffy stuff in the end. It's all beautiful stuff. Yeah. But the actual job, though, like, if you want to build bicep muscles, you're going to, you know, <laughs> do bicep curls. Yeah. And if you're an actor who wants to work in film and TV, well, you know, you got to learn. Here comes an audition. Learn it overnight. Go in there, do it in one to two takes. You get two takes in Australia, one take in LA. Really? Yeah. But no one's training for it. I didn't know that. I actually didn't know that. Mm. And sometimes you got five page scenes. Yeah. I had an audition in LA. It was 17 pages. It's pilot season. It's, oh, sat- it's yeah. Saturday night. My agent sent it to me at 8.30 p.m. Yeah. The audition's at 3 p.m. the next day. Wow. And I was like, I was never, I've t- studied every technique, I've studied everywhere, and I, I can't do this. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that really made me sad. <laughs> um, but yeah, this, this concept of what is acting, it's like, learn lines. When was, <laughs> when do you cool. feel you made that big sort of turn where you felt legit as an actor? Where I felt legit, um, yeah. oh. Cause I mean, you can sit here and talk about how this is all it is and blah, blah, yeah. blah, and all the fluff. Probably a few years ago. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. What was it? Like, what was it that actually did it? I, I think it was more so that I just knew that um, I liked what I saw <laughs> when yeah. I watched it back. And most acts, we hate ourselves when we watch yeah, ourselves back. For sure. It's either, you know, it starts with ego stuff. My hair, my nose, my skin, my yeah, this, yeah. that. Um, and then it starts moving on to more so, um, how do I become authentic? Because, I mean, I was the fakest person that I'd ever met in my life. Really? Um well, I think I was just confused, you know, born in South Africa and um, then get, come to a country to, town. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, country town in South Africa, <laughs> um, in Joburg, <laughs> and lived in Durban. And, you know, these um, remote, like, just different planets, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And then to come to Australia. And Africa's dangerous, man. We, at 7 p.m., you drive through red lights. Yeah. And as kids, you're like, well, this is how it works. Don't go down. How come? Because. Yeah, just because. And, like, you hear these stories. And, I mean, we left out of had a meeting and mum had a bad feeling she's like oh she was a bit telepathetic i say telepathetic i know the real word guys don't worry it's a joke i'm always joking remember that um and she didn't want him to go to this meeting and he didn't and then uh, there was a there was a bomb there was an explosion oh, shit. and so mum just was like that's it i'm out it was, she was getting her gun license and oh. so she left and left dad, dad there says i'm out oh, shit. and took us kids to australia and went to brisbane for a little while and um how old were you when you so seven Okay. Um, yeah, seven when I came to Australia. So, uh, you know, you fairly you, you, your your vision of what is what in the world. Yeah, it's quite formed. And my accent yeah, for was sure. full on. Yeah, I was going to say by seven years old, you're sort of who you're going to be. Uh, you know, I was, I was yeah. talking like this. I don't even know. Like I was probably <laughs> I don't know, but it was thick, a really yeah. thick South African accent. Um, and then to come to Australia, and I, I had this mate I'm on the Gold Coast, and he's like, oh, yeah, let's go for a ride, man. We're riding around his yard. And then he goes riding, you know, yeah. up the drive and then out onto the street. And he rode on the street, and I was like, and I stopped, and I was like, and he goes, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I, I can't ride on yeah, the street. Yeah. I'd never been on the street. <laughs> you know, I was basically went from one six-foot-high fenced area. You know, maybe I'm exaggerating this, but this is my memory of it. <laughs> and then I'd go to my kindergarten and be dropped off and then another fenced area. Yeah. Um... And that was my life. And then you come to Australia, and it's like, oh, no, we can... And we rode every... I was like, my mum would kill me. We rode everywhere in canals. We jumped in people's pools. And I was suddenly like, oh, my, Australia is... Uh, we don't realise how beautiful it is here and how safe. You know how frustrating that is, man? Because I grew up in a house with a strict wog father that wouldn't let you play in the front yard without like being in his sight. Because okay. if, you went, if you went in the front yard, then yeah. someone could potentially snatch you up. Right, these hyper That's the idiots. problem with the news. You see, back yeah. in the day, we didn't we didn't see the news, and we didn't realise that once exactly. in a blue moon, someone was stopped. But it's been it's been happening. It probably used to happen a lot more than you know back in the day. Yeah, but because you didn't talk about it, it didn't become real. Yeah, man. And, and now I think like we've gone South too Africa. far the other way. Yeah, this place like South Africa, where you're literally going from one fence, you know, box to another fence box because you have to. You can't go on the street because you can't. Yeah, you know? mum had knives stashed in in plants. Yeah, that's insane. Um, we, we did drills where we had to s- sit in the back of the car and pull a rug over us. Unfortunately, we actually had to do it one time. The car was being rocked and... Um, uh, oh, shit. Pretty, yeah, pretty heavy, heavy story. So my dad's driving. It's open freeway. You can drive as fast as you want. Yeah. Um, and I think they were in... Um, Swaziland, Zimbabwe or somewhere. Um, and, I mean, it's incredible. It's so beautiful. You drive out and then all of a sudden it's just, it's Africa. Yeah. <laughs> you know, very quickly. And, uh, and yeah, it's just, everything kills you. <laughs> uh, basically, so there's this saying, you know, you feel alive in Africa. So Dad's on this, he's driving along and then there was a guy who was walking across the road. Yeah. And it really drunk. And he's honked because he's doing 100 and whatever K an hour. And this guy just paused and stopped in the middle of the road and just looked at him. He went straight over him. Do, do, do. What? And went, ugh, and stopped. Then all these guys came running out and started rocking the car. Rocking the car, rocking the car, throwing stuff at it. Dad speeds off, goes to the cop station, goes, look, I've run over a guy. I think I, I may have killed him. Shit. And, um... And then the cop goes, um, I wish I could do a South African accent right now. <laughs> you were do, born there. Do you want to press charges? <laughs> that's you know? more Scottish. Yes, yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> do you want to, do, do you want, oh jeez. They're terrible. Dude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, you may have a grudge against me, but I come from a grudge is a place where you park your car. <laughs> yes, and so anyway, that's what I do to get into it. And he said, do you want to press charges for the damage to your car? What? That's what the cop said. 
Holy shit. Holy shit, right? When is this? This would be like uh, uh, yeah, when you were a that, kid. So yeah, 80s. 80s, some point. Fuck. Yeah. Alive and well, man. That's crazy. Mm. <laughs> you got well, back at all? No, I haven't. Look, I went to with a with a, a friend from school, and mum was worried that I might have to do army time. No, what? Even now? Yeah, well, that was that was you know that was back a bit. Um, you not you not now, not that, now. No, now I mean everything's fine. changed so much. Yeah, yeah. But either way, dangerous place. Come to Australia, like you guys, serious? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, you got to watch out. And it's like, guys, please. Yeah. Um, I got a guy who lives in Brazil, and you hear the stories. Oh, dude, the favelas there are insane, man. Like, Colombia, any uh, anywhere in South America. Yeah, and it's like. <laughs> Australia, trust me, Australia, it's going to be okay. <laughs> my my, my you know the building where I live, it's yeah. the biggest wank in the world. Um, so it used to be, it was actually, a, I believe, a hotel they were building and went bankrupt, so it's become residential. Okay. That's why my room is so small, I had to buy a different bed so it fits in it. But it's a glass tower, I have, you know, you know, 200 degree views of, of Melbourne and it's down Chapel Street. Tower. It's the Yeah, it's, it it is. Is. <laughs> it's a little glass, I'm a little, I'm a, I'm a fish or something that just looks out on the world. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, it's... I've got to ask you, where is the most whacked out place you've ever done a film? Any film? Ooh. Like, anywhere you've gone because of mm. work, not because of Ye- leisure. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Struggling actor, poor, poor as... <laughs> I've travelled the world, but not for a holiday. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's because I'm... I, I'm going to say two experiences. Um, I did... I played Aladdin in, in London, but I went to this... This guy was like, I didn't realise you were so big. Um, I wouldn't have put you in Redford and Gravesend. Gravesend... Um, yeah, like, it, it was a lovely place. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but I'm in the pub and I'm like, oh, excuse me. Um, yeah, I put my jumper down and it's gone. And I said, oh, would it... <laughs> Look like and I said it was like a Calvin Klein. They were, and I'm like, what do you mean? And they're like, oh, it's gone. Um, and, and there was a stabbing that night. And I was like, wow, these guys are really they're serious about their curry. When did you play Aladdin? Um, I think it was like 2000. <laughs> it was like 2010. But you're right. But but the point is this: that it was <laughs> the weather and everything. I was like, okay, this is pretty hard. Um, but Jakarta was probably um, uh, this action film. It was Thousand Islands, and it was Jakarta, and we like going to fish markets where they'd got dried fish everywhere. I love and, Jakarta, man. Yeah, it's got a lot of... Character. Um, just, oh, so much. But you got to admit, when you first land there, you're like, I'm a little bit scared. You saw the slums as you were driving in, yeah? On the oh, look, I think I, I landed and there was supposed to be someone picked me up. And then I'm like, well, there's no one here with a sign, like they said. <laughs> don't speak the language. Don't have a phone. Don't, and I'm just standing there going. And I just stood there you're and I was like... You're the whitest guy in the world looking for the guy with the Mr. Yeah, O'Brien and, and I'm like huge. You know, I'm six foot one. Everyone's like looking at me going. Yeah. And I've grown this beard because I'm going to play this assassin. So I'm trying to look like a badass and then there was a meal there and i was like i'm so hungry and i'm like i'm looking at it going oh it looks dangerous <laughs> and i was like 17 dollars 50 man even in, like it was quite a fancy meal yeah and then i like i paid for it and i was like a dollar 75 yeah it's a joke and i was like a dollar 75 <laughs> this is like i'll live here forever you know, yeah it was like beef and veggies and yeah and it's like mm, i've never tasted that flavor before <laughs> um so yeah that was definitely that was um that was. Pretty, I mean, I, I did about three months over there. When oh, Jakarta? Yeah, like Jakarta and Thousand Islands and um, no shit. Yeah, and and like even going to the to the the places where they dry fish. Yeah, I mean, that is a trip out. You, you stay there for a while, and you know every day you're there and you just smell dried fish and there's cats walking around. And there's goats. Like I'm like, how does a goat live here? <laughs> um, you know, I'm in a room getting changed and I look on the cupboard and there's a, there's a there's a sticker. Of um, um, Bin Laden. What? And I'm just like, what the? Where am I? I'm like, oh man. And what, like, where were you living, man? Like some sort oh, of a bro. refuge? Look, when you, I mean, even when we went to <laughs> Thousand Islands, I'm like, okay, here's your bucket to shower with. And I'm like, can I get water that doesn't have mosquito larvae <laughs> swimming in it? You know? Um, but yeah, there's some really amazing story, stories from uh, the Message Man film, like just people getting sick and just nuts, like next level. But you just wouldn't you wouldn't believe it. When was this? Um, so that that um, that was. I think we started. It took a little bit longer to make that film. You need to put more of this on your Instagram, man. Seriously. Yeah. Right. No. Like honestly, I'm very crap at social media. <laughs> Why? Um, you see, I grew. I was. I, I call it the originals. Okay. See, back in my day, well, back in my day, I was, I was a, a humble, a humble country boy we, from we, the old coast. <laughs> when I was a coastal boy, um, <laughs> like we had payphones. Yeah. 
And we didn't put money in there. We pranked. Because you could actually ring, and we ring once, and we ring four times, and that means pick us up from here. Yeah, I used to do and, that as well. You know, that's that was that was how it went. Yeah, that's a th- how is that a thing of the past? I, I would have been so like huge, phones. man. Like, back if I had social media when I was growing up, like, I was doing crazy-ass, funny, funny stuff. Just, oh, man, such a brat. Yeah. Like, just, you I know, just that. causing havoc. <laughs> Hilarious. You know, I, I think of a time I was with a mate, and we walked into this this club, and it was a private party, and everyone's up. You know, they booked the whole venue, and like, oh, does anyone give speeches? And went up on stage and gave a speech. And, you know, other people... People are lined up and standing there and then going, Sarah, I just want to say you've grown so much, you know, from, from <laughs> the little girl that I, I know you from and, you know, I'm just so proud of you. And, and then, you know, walking into the party and people go, excuse me, excuse me. Everyone's kind of like, do you actually know her? And I was like, no. Nah. And they're like, <laughs> you're really funny. Do you want to stay? You know, and I got away with it. So I just kept pushing that envelope. And so I was like, I want to be a stand-up comedian. You can't do that now. Now you just get thrown out, arrested. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of PC stuff, and it's not it's not one of my strong points. <laughs> being politically correct, <laughs> I think it's gone overboard. I think oh, being sensitive to some things is fair enough, but being mindful of certain things is fair enough. We've come a long way socially, you know. But then something is just like bullshit. Yeah, why don't you do stand up? Why don't you follow that more? Um, look, I think that I it, it's on the list of. We'll yeah? get back to it, and social media is probably your best bet for that, though. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, but how strong? How strong do you actually feel about your stand up? Yeah, do you oh, actually man. have material. Yeah, look, I've I've actually done stand up six times. Yeah, um, where and here? Uh, yeah, yeah, in all in Melbourne. Uh, I booked home and away. I was doing a one man show. And I was doing stand up, and then I booked home and away. Okay, and that just ended the the comedy career because I was suddenly like, you. There's a lot of things you can't say now, and you need to behave. I was going to say. I'm just going to. Okay, I'll tell you why. Okay, I've got a mate who about two years ago, maybe two, three years ago, is an actor, pretty well known, like especially in Melbourne, he's becoming bigger, blah, 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 blah. And he said to me that he wanted to do stand-up. He was considering it. He even asked me if I could sit down and write with him sort of thing. I said, dude, is that the smartest thing in your career right now? He goes, what do you mean? He goes, oh, it'll be sick in it, even just to suss it out, you know, like, like um, Eddie Murphy, you know. I said, no, hang on. Eddie Murphy was a comedian who became an actor. That's right. You know, every, think about every great comedian that you know. Were they an actor first or were they a comedian first? He goes, and I gave a few examples, you know, Steve Martin and Richard Pryor and all these guys. He's like, yeah, you're right. Because what's the difference? Re- yeah. Rebel Wilson, Chris Lilly, yeah. like Aussies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, think about it. I go, if you bomb as a comedian... And you've already established that acting thing. They're just going to think of you as that actor that tried to be a comedian. That is the problem. And he goes, yeah, he goes, you got a point. I said, dude, i got two words for you. Craig McLaughlin. Did you uh-huh. ever see that thing on Craig McLaughlin? No, I didn't. <sighs> okay. <let's> go. I'll <laughs> really? go to the video. Actually, you know what? Is it him doing stand-up? Yeah. See, here's the problem. Famous people aren't funny, you know why? <laughs> because people laugh at their jokes. Yeah. Because they like them. Yeah. Because they, they see, meet them and they're just like, uh-huh, uh-huh. They're not, not actually listening to you a lot of the time. They're just like, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm going to tell XYZ about this experience. Um, so when they do do stand-up, yeah, it can Dude, kind of I, suck. Um, I, I swore to myself. And it actually says stand-up fail. <laughs> Poor yeah. guy. Look, there's only got 30,000 views. It's because it's only, Craig McClough. There's only 30,000 people... And now you're introducing me to it yeah. and this Listen, other audience. I, I, when I watched this, someone sent it to me. This is when it first came out, okay? So this was years ago, so probably over a decade ago. And I watched it and I said, this is, this is painful. I, I can't watch this. And then I never watched it again because of how badly I was scarred. When my mate asked me about it, when I told him, I said, dude, here's the link. I go, Enjoy. Like I, I, I physically search. I didn't. Even, I didn't even load it up to watch it. I'll watch it right now if you want to. But dude, I'm, I'm probably last about a minute because it's it's just bad. I'm looking forward to this. I'm going to say that he's talking slow and he's trying to be funny, dude. Slow and loud, and he's waiting for the laugh. Is that why he failed? It's it's just. I'm bad. all about no. performance coaching. Dude, he's got a big crowd there, man. If it's he has a footy been, show, it's a 2005 footy show. If so you haven't been practicing ago. this stuff, you're going to fail, dude. Wow, there's a big audience. Hey, it's bad. Hey, listen, how good is it to have the boys back on the box? Yeah, and they're very kind to give me a couple of minutes just to tell you about this show I'm doing week tomorrow. Friday week, 
It's basically me, me rabbiting on about celebrity, and I reckon I've got a fair bit to rabbit on about. Uh, and I divide my life. And for those of you who don't know, I started out 20 years ago as the overalls wearing mulleted brother of Kylie Minogue. Dude, it's just not funny. Are oh, you? Yeah. Just, just wait. I, was I can't. I can't. The neighbours, and you know why the neighbours scriptwriters never investigated incest? Shit. Pisses me off to this very day. <laughs> but anyway, I, uh, I kind of. And could you imagine we talk about the you wedding of you know, Harold and uh, uh, Scott and Charlene's wedding? Could you imagine if the wedding had have been Harold and Bouncer? Now, wouldn't that have been Logie Award-winning television? Oh, Bouncer, wait till the honeymoon. Come on. But I divide my... Oh, <laughs> Do you know what, though? I his jokes, though, BC are for neighbours' crowds or and for celebrity the boys. And yeah. celebrity. He, he didn't realise his audience. He <sighs> whitened the yellows of my eyes. Dude, they gave I don't... Digital Donny Osmond smile on TV Week. Before my first brink of suicide after painful divorce Women's Day cover story. <sighs> my life BC, long before the English tabloids <sighs> suggested that I was secretly gay. And that Dude. I frequently sodomised my friend's pets. We are... Which is a complete it's because he's talking about... Only very occasionally sodomised animals having pets. sex. I can't, I can't. That's where you go wrong. But anyway, Dude, I seriously can't. Like, like, see, just so you know, I was a plumber. We're only two minutes in, man. This goes for five. Anonymous. And I think it's because he's saying I a lot. Being a plumber. <laughs> That's a side effect of actor and ego. I'm done with this, dude. I can't. Please. I can't. You can watch it in your own Put time. Put that puppy down. <laughs> You can watch it in your own time, man. Thank you. No, I can see that um, <laughs> he needs about 20 years of practice, but, he, you know, he'll come right. Um, that was, yeah, 2005, man. Have you heard of anything that Craig McLaughlin's done? Other than that assault <laughs> charge? Oh, God. <laughs> Jeez. Unbelievable. Um, you see, I don't hear a lot of that stuff because I sort of, you know, I'm not in that yeah. world, but, yeah, you do you do hear bits about that stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <With that> <laughs> I can't do it. It's just, it was so painful, man, because you knew he was going to go down. Just, yeah. Just, just by his face, like, it's, it's, it's all over. Look, if you're smashing a bag, I mean, is that, is that, is that news? No. Oh, well, he's smashing a shitload of bags, right? Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's on the cocaine, is what my dad used to call it. <laughs> oh, that cocaine stuff. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm sure that he, he probably can't even remember a lot of it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's that, you know, getting, especially if you're in a band and London, and I believe Coke is very cheap there. So he's buying it, he's getting drunk, he's picking up chicks, and he's been, he becomes a creepy yeah. bloke. Yeah. Just another creepy bloke. Another creepy... Jeez, they really screw it up for the good guys. Did you have to work not to get pulled into that crowd? Um, as in the creepy, creepy guys? <laughs> 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 no, nah, but like, as in... Obviously, you know, coming off from Raham and Away, when did you finish up with that? Uh, so I actually finished... Ten th- uh, 2010 was, so, that, so was, 2010, was the last ep. Okay, think of it like that. 2010, at the height of that sort of vehicle, surely there would have been... Trying to drag you left and right, you know. Did you feel like you capitalised on your exposure from that? Or do you feel you sort of actively tried to get away because you saw a glimpse of where it could go? Oh, okay. Are you talking about picking up girls? No, no, no. Generally, as in your personal profile and your exposure in Australia. Because, I mean, dude, <sighs> there's a reason why Kerry ann Kennelly and fucking all the idiots on Neighbours and every other random that they keep recycling. A, because it's the cheap... Aussies don't want to invest in new talent. I, I feel personally they don't. They'd rather just s- s- uh, squeeze blood from a stone, right, and just mm-hmm. keep draining the well. Or two, these celebrities actively allow themselves to keep getting, you know, milked out to all these different mediums. You know, like why Rove's show? What, did you watch Rove's show? Uh, I didn't, uh, like, <laughs> sure, I will walk past people's TVs. <laughs> um, and I sat down Dude, and watched some bits. It was terrible. Okay. And it got canned. Okay. And then there's an outcry as to why it got canned. It's because it was shit. Like, that, that, that's it. <laughs> uh-huh. Right? But there's a reason why. Like, they keep bringing... Surely at some point, it's on these media personalities to allow themselves to keep getting used for these vehicles. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's a strange world. How did you find it? I mean, after Home and Away... Mm. Did you sort of step back and say, I want to do my thing? Oh, wow. Or- Bro, I stepped so far back. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I still am back. Yeah. You know, I think I've mentioned to you, you know, yeah. the, the different reality shows and asking me to yeah, do yeah, them. Yeah. And um, Yeah, I mean, for me, 
I mean, I got into acting because I wanted to act. I yeah. wanted to tell great stories. Yeah. And when I booked Home and Away, I'd never seen it before. I didn't watch TV. Um, and so I watched the first ep, and I was like, oh, I'm not <laughs> sure that's my style. Yeah. Um, I didn't realise it was such an Australian... Um, uh, you know, Australians have been watching it since they were little kids, so it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. I didn't get that. I was from South Africa. I watched James Bond movies <laughs> as a child and ate oysters, you know, and had servants. I know it sounds bad, <laughs> but it's the truth. You know, and then I came to Australia and I'm just like... Just what? a humble, bo- humble yeah, lad from humble a, beginnings that's, that's in right. the country town. That's right. <laughs> um... <laughs> yeah. I swear, your avatar is just going to be a straw hat, man. With yeah. the, with the moonshine flask. <laughs> but, you know, I really do consider myself that guy. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I see it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You <laughs> <laughs> he can see it. Yeah, I know. Anyway. Awesome is a word I, I like. <laughs> okay, so you got in after your initial, uh, what's it called? Uh, you know, being exposed to Home and Away. Uh huh. What sort of how did you go from what the hell is this to okay i'm taking it on well you know they need to train people on that ride it's a really it's unfortunate that they don't and it's really unfair that they don't um because it destroys people um so so how did i deal with it um i didn't i think i did a terrible job of fame i think i absolutely did everything wrong in so many ways yeah um <laughs> I, can, I just laugh at it in hindsight and my mates are like bro that's a funny story and i'm like i know i was just always you see you gotta understand i was at school and i was doing comedy full-time entertaining people i couldn't even have a serious conversation so i've come a long way and humor is what got me out of being picked on i came to australia i had a south african accent i had braces um my parents at the time we couldn't we were in a sort of financial situation where i couldn't get the braces off so i had them for years I had a stutter and I had a blinking problem really yeah, man, I was just like, like, I'm a walk, and I'm fluoro white, you know, I have very fair skin, and I'm living on the Gold Coast, and I'm doing nippers, and everyone's got tans. So it was just, and I was extremely skinny, and um, it was really tough, Yeah, to be honest, like being picked on and bullied, and, and so comedy was my way out, because I'd, I'd if someone was going to bully me, I already knew five things that would just destroy this person, that I could just say, well, you know what, and everyone go, oh my god, he said it, but I'd say it to everyone and I'm mostly about myself so you know I really formed a following um and at parties people are like Paul Paul and I'd go and do my little my skits dude I actually that's probably one reason why I started doing impressions aha uh-huh. because you do impressions I just fantastic <laughs> damn you heard my son <laughs> <laughs> teach me it was it wasn't even impressions because I want to embody the person it was originally when I started doing voiceovers when I was a kid, because I watched Eddie Murphy on Coming to America doing like a hundred characters and shit like oh, that, so and good. I would just do the lines because people knew the movies uh, and I would laugh. Yeah, and because I was a shy, awkward kid that got bullied. Okay, that got me somewhere else. You yeah, know? I've always fallen back on comedy, man, just to get yeah. out of my skin and get the heat off me or whatever. You know? Yeah, such a fantastic thing, isn't it? Yeah. See, for me though, you know, like, so I, I can, so I was. Um, like, even when I booked Home and Away, so I'm in Melbourne. Yeah. I had a girlfriend I'd just been dating. I'm living in this apartment. I'm working in uh, the Pelican restaurant on Fitzroy <laughs> Street. And um, and then suddenly it's like, oh, you do this audition. Oh, cool. They like you. Cool. Okay, yep. Call back. Fly to Sydney. You got the role. Um, what was the turnover in that? It was when I got told that I got the role, I was in Sydney two weeks later. Okay. So you can imagine quitting your job, packing up your apartment, finding all that yeah, stuff, breaking massive. up with a girlfriend, basically. I'll come back for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, yeah. With uh, When will you be back? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'll see you in 19 years. Uh, yes. We'll always have the Pelican. <laughs> lovely, lovely girl, actually. She's, she was a keeper. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah. And then, and then, and then I went home and away and I'm like, oh, well, I'll still be funny and stuff. And I've been doing stand up. And I remember like saying some of my jokes in front of the guys and it was worse than crazy. Craig McLaughlin's <laughs> feedback they said. Um, so I'm saying, I think it was Chris Hemsworth, and then it was like Isabel Lucas, and then Indiana Evans, and uh, maybe a producer, and someone, yeah. and they're all standing there. And I was like, you know what? And I'd just done this and crushed it back home. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, you know, I always wanted a bigger dick. <laughs> you know, I want to get like a dick extension, but I want a dick that's so big it's like a tidal dick. I'm going to pull it out. The girl's like, ah! <laughs> and I'm, cause I'm doing this, and they're looking at me like... 
like looking around, like, <laughs> is he trying to? And I was just like, and then I was like, oh, a little bit of confidence got chipped away, <laughs> and a little bit. And then you know what happens? We try. If you're not confident with comedy, you try a little harder. Oh, it's over. So and so, I felt like home away for me was this. Went from a comedian to this guy that was just totally disrespected because you couldn't have a serious conversation, with. and he's trying to make these jokes that were just on the nose. <laughs> what was it like? Like, so let's use home and away as an example, man. What kind of conditions were? put on you as far as your working hours, your rate, you know, your scheduling, all that sort of stuff. Oh, it's intense. Um, yeah. Look, it's it's not it's not hard to do a 60, 70 hour a week if you if you add in travel time, learning lines and publicity. Yeah. Uh, you don't get paid for publicity. Um, so a lot of people would go, no, oh, I can't do it. I'm sick. You know, the cat ate my homework. Um, <laughs> and so they would call me and I was known as the publicity slut. And I was like, oh, that's not very the nice. The media whore. Um, the media whore. I was yeah. told that by other actors. I'm like, I'm like, well, what do you mean? I'm just like I thought there were fans, and um, and I was like, isn't that what it's about? I'd always stop for fans. I'd always take time. I'd always Logies. I was so late walking into the Logies because I was just like, well, there's all these people that want my autograph. Like I'm not gonna. I don't want anyone to not have one. <laughs> and so I was out there for hours. And I was like, oh, I will sign anything. It's so much work. <laughs> yeah, it's so much work. And then they're like, I'm like, where's my on train? Like, oh, they've already <laughs> taken it away. <laughs> I'm and I'm like, you stop me. I'm like, can I get some food over here? <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Where's my entree? <laughs> it's like, bummer. Yeah, story of my life. And, you know, so I did this guy who would be, I'm trying to do the right thing, but then it's like, I'm not up with the times. Dude, I'm like, you, you need to write a memoir. Oh, Just boy, unbelievable. Where's my entree? <laughs> Where's my entree? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, crazy times. I mean, I'm going to tell you this story, and I'm regretting already that I'm even bringing this up. All right, let's hear it. This is what we need. Come on. So, Logies, um, they stuff up the room. They go, look, we've got to put you in the penthouse. It's like, go on then. That's terrible. Um, Then I'm in the penthouse. I win the Logie. I'm like, yay, cool. All these people that never believed in me or respected me (laughs) suddenly (laughs) write to me and go, you made it. I always believed in you. (laughs) I'm rolling my eyes. I felt emptier and empty and lonely. I was like, I feel so lonely. Yeah. Um, Maybe it's because I didn't pick up that night. You see, that's how I started measuring it. Like, I must, wasn't enough. I must pick up a girl, and then I am whole. I must be desired. And my ego was like Tom Cruise. Yeah. Um, out of control and just obnoxious. Um, so anyway, I'm in the room. And my mate was telling us the other day, he goes, bro, I was in the lift, and uh, Chris Hemsworth's there, and he's like, is that your painting, mate? And he goes... Uh, well, yeah, well, no. And he goes, where'd you get it from? And he goes, well, Paul gave it to me. <laughs> so when people were leaving, I was grabbing stuff going, here you go, this is for you. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can take this. Because I was just a Gold Coast lad that was used to being hilarious. <laughs> and you just see where it goes. Um, so I do that. We stay up all night. We're drinking. Um, and they make you do an interview the next morning. I should have just turned, you can't say no. That's yeah. the thing with film. If you're sick, you're there with a bucket next to you. You throw up, they put more makeup and you keep filming because there's so many people that rely on it. And so I go down and do the speech and the publicist is like, Paul, no, because I got a beer in my hand. I'm like, it's fine. It's a light beer. I'm hilarious. And then we start and I've got my brother on the show standing next to me and they go, so what was the most memorable moment for you? And I never saw it. It's really hard to find. I think it was just, it was live though. My brother said he was banging his hand against because I just kept going, they gave me the penthouse. Well, the penthouse. What's the most memorable <laughs> moment? Now, I had a joke that I was doing and it made more sense. It actually just doesn't make sense. And it's a terrible joke. I, I don't even know why. I, it doesn't make sense. Okay. But that's what was funny about it. Um, and I'm like, I'm from Africa. And, you know... Um, <laughs> And anyway, so I said, yeah, there was so much hair gel. Because you'd walk into the toilets the first time I'd seen, like, you had cologne and cotton buds and hair yeah. products. So you could zhuzh in the bathrooms. <laughs> and so I'm, like, <laughs> zhuzhing all this stuff. And I was like, and they're like, what's the standout? And I said, there was enough hair gel in the bathroom to kill a small child in Africa. Oh. And my brother standing next to me, like, the, the yeah. my actor brother. Um, I don't want to say too many names. Yeah, and, no, he no, just, no. and he goes, huh? And then he looks around, <laughs> looks around like, what? And I'm like, He's the one who started it because they would have gone, oh, what? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's extra bad. Um, and they, they cut me off live. And I just went, oh. And then I looked at the publicist. <laughs> and, and here we got the, the, the guy who owns you know, Channel 7 going, oh, Paul O'Brien did the best speech last night that we've had. And I was like, you know, last year I snuck into the Logies after party. Um, <laughs> and now, you know, I'm standing here holding one of these, drinking champagne with you fine people. <laughs> and they, people loved it. Um, 
Yeah. But no. <laughs> and then the next morning, you know, I'm like, you know, I'm doing this funny speech. I'd like to thank my parents for having me. Um, all, you know, all that sort of jazz. And the next morning, I'm like, yeah, let's keep it rolling. Yeah. Um, I'd had the mic in my hand all night because people, <laughs> people listen to you when you win awards <laughs> or when you're on TV shows. Yeah. Um, it's not necessarily healthy. No. If anyone gets to talk too much, they're going to talk absolute garbage. And if they actually review it, they'll go, I don't believe anything I said. Yeah. No, completely. Like, we're just. Dude, we're, I listen to these podcasts. I listen to these podcasts back. I'm like, when the fuck did I even say that? I'm insane. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, this must be quite confronting for you when you, when you hear it. It forces you to try and be a better person. <laughs> it, it, it does. <laughs> 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 or you just end up end up laughing at your own stupidity and just yeah. prolong the cycle of you know nothingness. I mean, that's just how it is. Mm. Okay, so post that hype, was there any management going forward? As in from their end? Well, no one knows what the experience is like. Yeah. Your agents don't know what it's like. Um, other actors are experiencing it at the same time as you. The producers, they just don't give a damn, my friend. No, no, they don't. They've got so many other things to worry about. <laughs> it's, a, it's a drop in the pot, in, man. In, in fact, there was, um, there was a... Uh, a big producer one time on a show that I worked on once. And, <laughs> once? Uh, and, and he said... The galaxy far, far away. Yeah, far, <laughs> far away in Summer Bay. Um, and he said, treat actors like mushrooms. Keep them in the dark and feed them shit. And when you think about it, it's true because actors think that they have an opinion. And it's like, wait a minute, let me just remind you of something. You don't, we tell you what to say. We tell you where to stand. We light you. We do your hair. We tell you what to wear. The makeup, like we do everything. You really don't. We get someone to pick you up, you know, and to come and get you and cook you lunch. It's like, please, you're basically a baby with intelligence because you said I'm going to get a job that pays me lots of money if it works out, and I get I get the girl or the guy or the limos and the and the you know. The crap, endorsements yeah. and all the yeah. all the frills. <laughs> the Do you get to pick your endorsements? No, not at all. They, they pick you. Look, girls tend to get a lot of the endorsements. Guys, not so much. Yeah, I noticed that. Look, Australia sucks um, for a lot of creatives. Unfortunately, there's there's not enough people. You're telling me. And if there's not enough people, there's not enough advertising. If there's not enough advertising, there's not enough money. Yeah. So what happens? Let's just go with something we know works. So let's cast, you know, um, XYZ person yeah. in this role. Or let's put this singing show, but let's just use the same judges, the same people. Because we know they can do the job. We know they've got a fan base. And we just don't want to risk it. Yeah. So it's a safe bet. It's a safe bet. It's for a small margin of plus as opposed to nothing or less. Yeah. yeah. But at the same time, I think it's a bit of a shame because maybe the quality of Australian content is not keeping up. We seem to be able to keep up with the rest of the world in a lot of different areas. Um, but I don't feel as though people are watching many Australian shows. What, what Australian, um, or, or Australian films? There? Message like- Man. It's an Aussie action film. <laughs> Did you get to see it? No. I never heard of it. It's a pretty solid film. Yeah. It's pretty brutal, though. Is it? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, this, uh, this one came out, um, I don't know, about eight months ago. Uh, it's just come out on... Some platform. Oh, look uh, where is oh, it? Oh, here we go. Official trailer. Official, oh, that's a trailer. Um, go further down because I want you to see that, like, some of the kills in it. They're just the director Corey Pearson. He's he's next level. He scares me with some of the stuff he has. I'm like, uh, I, I'm not a horror guy. I'm not a violent guy. I'm not an action guy. Like an action hero for me is like, why would you do that? Actually, go go back a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Go back. Go back. Go back. This is the first. So everyone's like, oh, it's a pretty slow kind of film at the start. It's like a beautiful country. Yeah, a little bit back from that. Oh, so this this dude's death. I, I look like I ate a lot of spaghetti bolognese. Holy shit, over. that's you? Yeah, so watch, watch this <laughs> sequence. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Soundtrack's so banging in this thing. So where was this shot? So this is the, actually this scene is the is the, the where the dried fish were. Oh, the fish! It smelt so funky, and of course you know what Jakarta's like. It's so yeah, hot, hot as fuck. So man. it's so hot, smells like fish. <laughs> and you know I'm working here every day, going, wow, um, that was a test. That was a real test. Holy shit! <laughs> These are pirates, by the way. Tell they, me they're Indonesians. They, they take... Yes, they are. I was going to say, they, they take, bought in Malays to cover no. the budget or something. Do you know what? I, I did a film in, in Fiji um, in April last year, and they were supposed to be these Fijian people, and they used 
um, two Chinese Australians, <laughs> and one guy from Indonesia, and a Kiwi. That's why. It's so rude, that's man. That's why I It's asked. so rude. I know, man. Yeah. We're actually... That's pretty ominous, guy, dude. Don't take another I like step. It. Dude, that's a chilling shot, man. Yeah. Little smug smile. That's what I do to it. So this guy, his name's Ryan Teller. He used to be an assassin. He's he's hung up the knife. <laughs> but uh, these guys, they just made him have to come back. <laughs> he's hung up the knife. <laughs> there are some scenes in this. The director couldn't get all the men that he wanted, but, yeah. oh, man, he's such a talented guy. Such a good writer. Oh, I know, right? You should have heard the cinema when we did the screening in Bali. Wait for this, bro. What the f- I know, right? Can you hear the flies? Those are yeah. real flies. You put fake blood on yourself in a place where they, they salt fish and dry it? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of flies. Dude. And they love sticky blood. Sorry, that was yeah. epic as fuck. It's pretty full on. How did that look at, like screened? How? Yeah, I know. Actually, I should do a screening night for people in Australia who just what? play it off what? YouTube. Dude, why don't you? Yeah, I should. Um, I'm, I'm going to do a screening. I should do it. Maybe, maybe we can do a screening. What do you yeah, we'll do one here. Hey, guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, otherwise, well, I'll get everyone to pitch in five bucks and, and I'll rent out a BR cinema <laughs> and you guys can all come and watch it. We'll get 20 people in here on that couch. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm thinking we need a bigger cinema. A bigger cinema. I want you to go up and look at one more bit because there's so many. Okay. Cool bits in this, but um, no, but you're gonna rule the movie now. Yeah, you're right. No, 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 I just no, always no, show no. people the action bits. And I'm like, yeah, no, that's awesome. no, no. I'm, look, I'll do not do go and buy it already. <laughs> the problem is you can't actually. Like, I went to get it on Amazon Prime. I'm like, yes, we've got it. And yeah, it's on there. I've got two films on Amazon Prime right now, and yeah. I can't. Why? Um, I can't play them in Australia. Why not? Because uh, they're for American. I've got American set up, so I can watch American Netflix and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'd have to get another account. <laughs> What are you? Um, you no, no, because it's not. Had, it wasn't sold to Australia. <sighs> Wait a second. Because it gets sold on, in t- different on, territories. Hang on. You're the lead actor in this movie, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. You don't own a copy of the movie? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. That's what I mean. You know, smart, dumb Why? guy. Smart, dumb guy. Surely in your contract you could have said, I'd like a copy oh, of the look, DVD. <laughs> look, I mean, I, I've... <laughs> I've worked very closely with the director. Um, Corey hadn't actually done anything previously. Yeah. So here I am, I've, you know, I've done all these shows, and it's like, why would you work with someone? And I just I just thought that he had a lot of talent, mm-hmm. a lot of potential. And Dude, that looks sick. Yeah, it's... That looks tough. Bro, for an Aussie film... Yeah. It's, and for... It's a low-budget action film, which is just the dumbest idea ever. I know, you can't. But it's a really solid... I watch action films, and I go, message man's better. Yeah. Everyone's calling it, they're saying, you're like John Wick, except you can act. <laughs> um, or people are saying, you know, this is actually a really solid, because it's got a storyline. <laughs> they call it an action film with heart. <laughs> I'm like, what? That sounds weird. It is. It's an action film with brutality and a sprinkle of What Disney. do you reckon is the key factor that separates the quality of Aussie movies and, say, Yank movies, besides budget? Besides budget. Well, <sighs> what do you reckon drags down a production's like quality? To say that it's pretty good for an Aussie film. So, it's... I've never seen Aussies make an action film. Ever. Um, no, I can't think of any. Think of one. That's why I'm like, I can't believe this thing isn't everywhere. Um, um, it's straight straight action. Like yeah. An action movie. An action movie. I can't think of any. That's right. I, can, I think of violent movies. Yeah. But not... You know, like action. your Animal Kingdom is like a... But it's not yeah. a... Yeah, but not straight action. Mm, yeah. That's right. That's actually true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I'm like, what? And so many people have been asking.